Welcome to Let's Speak English with Mercs. Hi, my friends. Today's stories is the entrepreneurial mindset. From vision to victory, listen carefully and repeat after me. Chapter 1 The Beginning. My name is Mercs, and I have always loved starting new business ideas. Ever since I was a young boy, I would come up with inventions and sell things to make money. I studied hard in school and learned about running a company. After university, I got a job working for a big tech company. The work was interesting, but I felt like I wanted to be my own boss. I started thinking about what kind of business I could start on my own. I talked to friends and family about my dream of being an entrepreneur. Many people thought it was too risky to quit my job, but I was excited to take the chance. In my free time, I began researching different business ideas. I thought about things people need or would enjoy. After many nights researching, I decided to start a coffee shop business. I love coffee, and people always need a place to relax and work. Chapter 2. Making a Plan The next step was to make a business plan. A plan is very important to know if your idea can be successful. In my plan, I wrote about the products I would sell like coffee, tea, and snacks. I also wrote about the location for the shop and the design inside. I figured out startup costs like rent, furniture, machines, and supplies for the first few months. I needed to get loans from the bank to pay for everything, so I made financial projections to show how much money I think I can make. I also wrote about marketing the shop to new customers. When my business plan was finished, I presented it to the bank. They reviewed all the details to decide if I could get a loan. After some discussion, the bank agreed to give me money, but I had to promise to pay it back over time with interest. Now it was time to get to work building my coffee shop dream. Chapter 3. Opening the Doors With the loan money received, I started searching for the right location for my shop. After looking at many spaces, I found a small storefront in a busy downtown area. The rent was reasonable, so I signed a lease to rent the space for many years. Renovations took a long time because I did much of the work myself to save money. I installed new floors, painted the walls, put in coffee machines, and arranged seating. Getting permits and licenses from the city was also a lot of paperwork. When everything was ready, I did a soft opening with friends and family to test out operations. Soon after, it was time for the grand opening. I put up colorful signs and offered special promotions to attract new customers. Lots of people came that first day, which was exciting, and made me happy my business was starting well. Chapter 4. Learning Challenges While the first few weeks of business went well, I soon found managing the shop alone was difficult. There was always much to do, like stocking supplies, cleaning, taking orders, and handling the cash register. I was learning the responsibilities of being the boss. Hiring new employees helped share the work, but also came with its own challenges. Training staff took time and mistakes were made as people learned. Dealing with schedules, payroll taxes, and labor laws was complicated. Some staff did not work out and had to be let go. Customer service issues arose too. One person sent back a drink saying it was made wrong, but I noticed they had drank most of it already. Handling complaints politely was a skill to learn. Keeping accurate books and paying bills on time was also new to me. Closing the shop every night and problem solving drained my energy. It was a steep learning curve, but I was determined to succeed. Chapter 5. Growing Pains After a few months, business kept expanding with many regular customers coming each day. This was exciting, but also caused new problems. The small size of the shop was now too crowded at peak times. Upgrading coffee machines and hiring more staff increased costs too. Minor repairs were also needed more often as the space aged. I decided and renovation was needed to accommodate more seating and improve operations. Taking out a larger loan for improvements was a risk, but I felt it was time to grow. Late nights were spent mapping out new layout designs. Temporary closures during construction angered some customers, though most were understanding. The upgraded shop reopened to positive feedback, but higher costs from the work meant prices also had to increase slightly. A few customers complained about the changes. Adapting to stay competitive in the local market was challenging me continuously. My personal finances also got tight paying for everything, but I was determined the hard work would pay off. Chapter 6. Brand Recognition 
After celebrating the one-year anniversary, my coffee shop was becoming known in the community. More people were stopping by each month, which was satisfying. But I wanted to attract even more customers long-term. Marketing the brand through various channels became a new focus. I designed eye-catching signs and menus. Running promotions on social media like Facebook brought in younger clients. Sponsoring local events put my shop's name out there too. I even created customized coffee mugs and t-shirts for sale. Word of mouth from happy patrons remained the best promotion. Things like friendly service, quality drinks, and a warm atmosphere kept them returning. But competing for attention in the busy market took creativity. Figuring out the right marketing mix tested my business skills continuously. Revenue kept climbing, which let me hire an assistant manager to help with operations. However, maintaining quality as growth accelerated brought stress. My dreams were becoming reality, but long hours and financial pressure mounted too. Had I taken on more than I could handle? Chapter 7. Adjusting Goals After two years of non-stop work and worry, I was exhausted but proud of the success achieved. My coffee shop had become a staple in the community with many regulars. Financial reports also showed steady profits being made. However, the pressure was taking a personal toll on my health and relationships. I realized a change may be needed before burning out. Self-reflection made me question if continual expansion should remain the goal. While growth was satisfying, more was not automatically better. Discussing options with trusted advisors provided clarity. Perhaps stability could be prioritized over constant change. Downsizing staff and simplifying operations entered consideration. Short-term losses may allow focusing on quality of life again. Cutting marketing spending could ease workload too. Even considering selling the business altogether crossed my mind. Whatever the decision, careful planning would be required to prevent harming all built. After much debate internally, a new balanced direction emerged. Scaling back ambitious plans would relieve stresses, but completely leaving would feel like failure. A compromise, keep the core shop running well while exploring low maintenance sidelines. Selling pre-made drinks and goods wholesale had potential. Consultancy advising others may offer flexible income too. Implementing adjustments took delicacy. Staff and customers accepted the refinements, though a few lamented changes. Early results showed less profit numerically. However, personal gains increased significantly in family time and passions outside work. Despite risks, moderation seemed the wise path forward into an unknown future. Chapter 8. Welcome Challenges Adapting to a simpler lifestyle allowed reflecting on my entrepreneur journey so far. While challenges overwhelmed at times, overcoming those built character. Even failures taught invaluable business lessons. Most importantly, following a daring dream led to fulfilling work helping the community. The future appears bright though uncertain. New competitors may threaten as the market shifts. Economic downturns could hurt customer spending too. Keeping the shop modern requires persistent learning also. However, a supportive local network of patrons provides stability, and tapping creative sidelines supplements reliable core income. True entrepreneurship means constantly solving problems or seizing opportunities. Coasting feels risky after initial success, so keeping an open mind to fresh challenges excites rather than worries me. Consulting may spread skills helping others avoid pitfalls, Testing wholesale concepts could expand the brand further. Most exiting, passing on guidance gained to aspiring entrepreneurs motivates. Sharing triumphs and tribulations through mentorship seems rewarding. While completely retiring, the businessman remains distant. Adventure still appeals more than predictability. And who knows what the next chapter may bring. Chapter 9. Life Lessons Running a small business is the hardest yet most fulfilling career path possible. Succeeding required juggling roles as manager, accountant, salesman, and visionary simultaneously. Personal sacrifices also happened along the way, such as missed family time or social events. But the self-satisfaction gained can't compare. In retrospect, some lessons stand out the most from this experience so far. Firstly, dedication, passion, and determination keep entrepreneurial dreams alive through endless problems. Giving up, was never an option for achieving goals. 
creativity also fuels innovations that competitors cannot copy. Secondly, resilience shakes off defeats, which become daily occurrences. Tough skin and optimism sees opportunities within risks that daunt others. Learning from errors prevents repeating mistakes and accelerates progress too. Finally, community support provides the backbone for small enterprise to survive and thrive. Good relations with patrons, suppliers, associates, and local leaders prove invaluable. Giving back to neighbors builds vital allies who cheer victories and offer helping hands in dark times too.